Put your phones on silent. Please. My phones on silent. I'm coming. Sorry, what did you say? I think Mum just wanted to check to see. I've uninstalled Facebook, so you might have to do it for Sister Reverend Brooks. No, because that would show me. No, thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, just check. Check to the Facebook Live. That it's working? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. That's what I'm trying to find it. Oh, here we go. Yes, she's live now. It's very live. Got you out, Angelica, on the Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon everybody, good afternoon everyone that is joining us, I hope you're well on this good Friday. Um, we're just going to take um, another minute before we start, just so people have time to tune in, and if there's any issues that they couldn't arise now. So your orders are your things well, good afternoon, um, Brother Steve. I'm just going to ask you um, when we're ready if you can mute everybody's microphone so that there's no interference. Thank you, um, Reverend Steve. Looking at the face. Good afternoon, it is the time. Cool, it is um, past 11.30, so we're going to get started. Um, I am Angelica. I just wanted to say um, hello to everybody that has joined us so far. I want to welcome Pastor and Sister Cox. I'd like to welcome Reverend, Reverend Bridget Brooks uh, and family. Um, and I'd like to welcome Reverend Stephen Jarrett and family, as well as all my wonderful brethren, as we are here uh, to commemorate Good Friday, the day that Jesus was sent on the cross to die for our sins and it's the most important um it is the most one of the most important days that we have to really think about and remember as Christians as Jesus was sent on the cross to die for our sins um and as we get started I'm going to start um looking at John 8 um and it's a story and it says that Jesus was at a temple and he was teaching at the temple and as he was speaking uh teachers of religious law and the pharisees brought a woman to him who had been caught in the act of adultery they put her in front of jesus and said teacher the law of moses says to stone her what do you say they said this to him because they were trying to trap him they knew that if that jesus would not be for stoning her which was according to moses's law and they said to this to Jesus to see if he didn't agree with Moses' law, then that was a way for them to say he was not a true prophet of God. And Jesus took some time because he knew what they were looking for and they were looking to trap him. And after a while, Jesus answered, all right, all right, you may stone her. You can put this woman to death for her sins. However, let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Thank you, Lord. And as he said that, one by one, the teachers, the accusers started slipping away. And one by one, the crowd slipped away until there was only one person left next to the woman. And that was Jesus. Jesus was the only one who had never sinned. And just as Jesus had said, he was the only one permitted to throw the first stone. Did Jesus throw the first stone? No, he didn't. He said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? She said, no, Lord. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And this really just um, shows and demonstrates Jesus's love towards us. He was the one, the only one who had never sinned. He could have thrown the first, first stone. But he did not because of his love for us he can forgive us he forgives us for every sin every every time we turn wrong he is there and he says follow me and you will be forgiven thank you lord and we thank you lord for 
getting rid of our accusers and the only one that's left standing lord is you who has given us away you have mercy on our souls so we thank you john 8 continues on and it says jesus went on to say i am the light of the world if you follow me you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life thank you lord I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in sickness because you will have the light that leads to life. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in sorrow because you have the light that leads to life. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will not have to walk in poverty because I am the light that leads to life. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Yes, if Lord. you follow me, yes, you won't Lord. have to walk in mental illness Hallelujah. because you will have the light that leads to life. Praise I am Lord. the light Hallelujah. of the world. Hallelujah. If you follow me, you will not have to walk in pain. You will not have to walk in sorrow. Thank you will you, not Jesus. have to walk in trials. You will not Thank have to walk you, in tribulation. Jesus. You will Thank not have you, to walk Jesus. in poverty. You will not have Praise to walk in sickness. You, you do not Jesus. have to walk in the situation that you are in now you, because Jesus. you will have the light that leads to life uh, and that yeah. light is Jesus and Jesus we thank you and yeah. we praise yeah. you yeah. Lord we praise you for that light that you have given to us that we have Hallelujah. Thank, thank you Lord Jesus. John 1 verse 5 says the light shines in the darkness and the Hallelujah. darkness can never extinguish it so all those situations in the darkness the, the light the darkness can never extinguish the light in your poverty it can never extinguish the light of, the Jesus. Name of Jesus we thank you Lord we thank you Father for the light that you have given to us first John 1 verse 7 says but if we walk in the light as God is the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all oh, sin Thank you, Lord. That's just Hallelujah. not something. That's not your small sins. That is all sin. That is every sin that you may have done and that you will have done. Jesus has said that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So we can go ahead and we can walk in freedom. We can walk in love. We can walk in love knowing that we have the ultimate freedom through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, but you... You, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvellous light. Thank, Thank you. you so we have been called out of darkness and into light Hallelujah. and we must walk in his light and we must show others and shine our light for the world so that we can give glory and honour unto lord thank hallelujah. you lord the song thank that we're going to start off with starts with light of the world yes. hallelujah he stepped down into thank the darkness you, to open our eyes so that we could see you know you cannot see clearly in darkness we have the light so we can see thank you lord um we are here to worship him we are here to bow down we are here lord to say that you are our god we are here to worship you we are here to worship you thank you lord thank you lord for sending your son for us to die for our sins the most perfect sacrifice we thank you lord thank we you thank jesus. you lord hallelujah thank you, jesus we start with light of the world thank you lord
surrounding love lord that covers us lord jesus that you pick us up when we are down your peace lord it surrounds us we thank you lord we thank you as we go into alpha and omega hallelujah just want you to worship with us right now and worship the lord hallelujah thank you lord
Jesus. Highest praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank we you, thank Jesus. You, Lord. We Hallelujah. thank you, Lord Jesus. We will worship your name. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we call thank out on you, your Jesus. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Mountains can move when we call your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Just very quickly, I want to thank uh, my mother and sister Alexina for helping me out with the praise and worship, and my brother who helped to lay down the tracks. And we are going to go into the opening prayer, which is going to be led by Deacon Brooks. Um, just keep worshiping as we go into the rest of Hallelujah. our Good Friday service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord today. Today there is still worship taking place in Luton. Um, doors of the buildings may be closed, but our homes are open where we can still pray. And we're connected together as brothers and sisters of the New Testament Church of God. And anybody else, friends and family members who are looking in, we are here and we're worshiping and praising the Lord. My prayer today will also include from the praise in the Psalms, Psalms 117 through to um, 118 and the fourth, to the fourth verse will also be included in my prayer. Praise and hallelujah this morning. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, that you are God, all the same. Whatever happens, you are God, and we are here to praise you. Father, people have tuned in, taken time out of this in this difficult time and concentrate this morning to actually bring in actual praise to you as a community, Lord. We may not be physically together, but we are together in, and binded together in the spirit. Yes, and we praise you and we worship you. Hallelujah. And we're gonna say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Lord, this is the season of the Passover. Hallelujah. Lord, this is the season of Easter when yes. Jesus Christ was slain yes. on the cross at Calvary. And because of his death, Lord, we can have Hallelujah. the victory. Because of his death, Thank we have you, victory. Because of his death, yes. we can have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And so this day we praise you. We say hallelujah. hallelujah. And every home in Luton, in every home that is hearing my voice today, hallelujah. we praise and we lift you up. Lord, hallelujah. in every home that is here and we pray, we bring a blessing. Yes, in every Lord. home, in yes, every heart Lord. who will hear us today yes, Lord. and yes, in the future or from the recording of this, we bring Thank praise you, and honor unto your name. Thank Father, as the psalmist also Jesus. said, in Psalms um, 117, in the prayer of the psalm, the psalm to ex exhortation to praise God, it says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endure forever. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Yes, Let Lord. Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the people of Luton now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them that now, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Lord, your mercies endureth forever. And we pray a prayer of blessing upon all our people. And we say, Hallelujah. 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 Hey, good morning. Good morning. I got a feeling not a lot of people are awake yet. But you know something? It doesn't matter. Um, it is Good Friday. And some people may say, how can it be a Good Friday? Um, when we think about what happened, it's the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. That's what makes it a Good Friday. And so before I even go into anything, I want us just to shout, Hallelujah. And let us just shout, Praise the Lord, because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, brethren, let us shout. Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! You know, He is worthy. I 
and if there were other ways I can say it, and if I could say it in other languages, I would, because he is just worthy of all the praise. You know, um, if those that may have just logged on didn't hear the introduction, um, my name is Bridget Brooks, and I am the Associate Pastor at Luton New Testament Church of God. And I just want to welcome all of you um, who are online right now via Zoom and Facebook. Hallelujah. A big, big welcome um, uh, to our Good Friday service. You know, I would like to take the time just to greet and thank um, our senior pastor, Reverend Vincent Cox. Um, I want to thank him um, for, the, for asking the Brooks family the, the Brooks household to take the service today and I'd also like to greet his lovely wife sister Donna Cox and family and greetings to the body of Christ not just in Luton not just New Testament Church of God but wherever you find yourself and you say I am a believer I welcome you in the precious name of Jesus. You know what? I would also like to thank Angelica for leading such an inspirational um, praise and worship. And my word, didn't she preach before she sang? You know, she gave such a powerful word. And I want to thank her for that. And I also want to thank Alexina and Angelica, Alexina and Garrett for the contributions they made. Hallelujah. And I would like to thank Brother Brooks for the opening prayer. Hallelujah. And so the topic today, and I'm going to just ask you to give me just 15 minutes just to share with you. And the topic for me and to, to give to you is faith in God conquers circumstances. Faith in God conquers circumstances. And I think that faith has been the, the, the flag, hasn't it, um, for what we're going through. Because we know it takes faith to overcome fear. It takes faith to overcome our circumstances. Now, I want to just go straight into the word. And I want to look at the events leading up to the crucifixion. Because it is Good Friday. And what I would like to do is just to recount a little bit and then go right into the word. And so on the Wednesday afternoon, Jesus went to Mount, to, to, to Mount of Olives and delivered his discourse to those assembled. And one of the things he spoke about, you may remember the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Let us find ourselves among the five wise virgin, virgins in this season. Two additional things happened on the Wednesday. Jesus predicted that in two days he would be crucified at the time of the Passover. And secondly, Judas planned the betrayal of Jesus with some religious leaders. And so looking on Thursday, on Thursday, Jesus and his disciples prepared the Passover lamb and they had their cedar meal together. Jesus shared heartfelt words with his disciples and offered an intercessory prayer on their behalf. And when you go into John, you'll see that detail so well. The prayer, he prayed for himself, he prayed for the world and he prayed for those who believed in him. Hallelujah. And so on Friday, early in the morning, Jesus was tried. He was tried four times, twice by Pilate, and he was brutally flogged, beaten and mocked. You know, sometimes um, we, if you, you think sometimes we hurt ourselves and then we go, ouch, you know, or sometimes we get stubbed with a pin or we may put our hand in fire accidentally, obviously not on purpose. Um, and we say, ow, and that is nothing compared to what our Jesus went through. Today, they would maybe call it torture, physical, mental and psychological torture he went to. He was led to the cross. He was crucified at 9 a.m. and died 
at 3 p.m. and was buried later that day. But I would just like to rewind a little bit because as I sought the Lord and I said, Lord, what would you really have me share that can connect us to what's happening now to what happened almost 2,000 years ago? Because even though it was 2,000 years ago, it still applies today. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles or you have access to a Bible app, I'm going to ask you just to turn to Mark 14. So if we can all just turn to Mark 14. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm going to do this old fashioned style. Do you remember the days when the, the preachers would um, read the scripture and preach as they were reading the scripture? So I'm going to do that so that I'm not doing it separately. Hallelujah. And so has everybody got Mark 14? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go to let's start at verse 32. <clears throat> All right, verse 32. So remember the topic is faith in God conquers circumstances. Hallelujah. So at verse 32, it says, Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And so Jesus, knowing that the time was coming, had his disciples around him and said come on come with me but just outside of Gethsemane he said look just sit here and wait because I need to pray and so in verse 33 he says and he took Peter James and John with him and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed so first of all, at the beginning of verse 33, it says he took Peter, James and John. You know what? Jesus was entering into warfare prayer. He knew what he had to endure, but he knew that he could not, that he could not um, go in alone. And he needed that support with prayer. And sometimes, you know, he knew who to call on. Who did he call on? He called on Peter, James and John. Brethren, sometimes we go through certain circumstances and sometimes we call on the wrong people. I suppose only because we feel that those people will help us in our times of distress. But sometimes they can make a situation worse. Sometimes they can actually make you feel more depressed once you finish talking to them. But Jesus, he knew who to call, even though we know what happened a bit later. And so as Christians, we must know who to call on to pray with us when we're going through our time of distress. Hallelujah. Remember, faith in God conquers circumstances, whatever they may be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we see here the emotional side of Jesus, the emotional side, because it says he was troubled and deeply distressed. Brethren, aren't we seeing that today where people are feeling troubled and they are feeling distressed because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's happening. They don't know what it's about. And they're listening to different prophets. Some of them are true. Some of them are half true. Some of them are false. But people are in distress. Hallelujah. But we saw that Jesus was distressed. But what did he do? Let's go to verse 34. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. So he didn't keep his distress to himself. He had to tell somebody, brethren, sometimes we suffer in our circumstances and we don't tell anybody. But Jesus himself said to his disciples, I am feeling distressed. There is nothing wrong with saying it. And don't let anybody condemn you if you are feeling distressed. Hallelujah. But Jesus gave us the way. He said that um, stay here. And watch. 
We need watchmen and watch women in the church, brethren. We need watchmen and women in the church when we come under spiritual attack. Hallelujah. So verse 35, are you with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got verse 35. And um, he went a little farther and fell on the ground. And so even he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he went a little way away from where his disciples were. But he was feeling the weight of what he was going to have to face. And he fell on the ground. He fell on the ground and prayed. Hallelujah. And the prayer he said that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Hallelujah. And he said, verse 36, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And so we can see where there was the struggle with the flesh and the spirit. You know, if you knew that you were going to face mocking, flocking um, and torture, would you go in willingly? Yeah, yeah I'll do it. But Jesus realized, he said, this mission, this mission, God, do I really have to do it? But he knew, and there's nothing in here to say that God actually responded to him at that time. But he still asked God. He said, but at the end, he said, but not my will, but yours. And you know something, as a young person, because I'm not young now, just in case you didn't realize, when I was young, and I read that verse, it made me cry. It made me cry. And because I was thinking he didn't, his flesh didn't really want to do it, but he knew spiritually that he had to do it so that we could have redemption, so that everybody across the whole world could have access to him and to the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, um, as we move on, what verse am I on now? And verse 37, he says, then he came so he, and found them sleeping. So he went back to where um, uh, Peter, James and John were. And uh, he, he, he said he, he found them sleeping. And look at this, because I never really took note of this before. And he said to Peter, and this is where he speaks. Simon, are you sleeping? So he was really upset with him that he called him, not Peter, the loving name, the, 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 the Peter who is, you know, the rock, this is where I'm going to build my church. He reverted to Simon because Simon had a different connotation, you know. And so he said, are you sleeping? And it's like, if I give, I won't, if my mum was <laughs> was calling me when I was younger, not now, praise God, you know, and she usually she'd call me mama or she'd call me bridge or whatever. But if I knew she was upset with me, Bridget, you know, and, um, and so it was that Jesus reverted uh, and he said, Simon, because you know when some, when your loved one, even your partner, um, your husband or your mum or your dad is upset with you, they'll call you and then you go, okay, I know you're not really happy right now. So this is what Jesus did. And he says, could you not watch one hour, just one hour, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And then he said, the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. You see, this is why the word says that we must walk in the spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh because the de desires of the flesh is strong. Let us not lie to ourselves. The desires of the flesh is strong. And so we need to walk in the spirit. And verse 39, it says, again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. So can you imagine that he said, you're sleeping again? 
you know, and they were like, must be looking at each other to think, well, we have not really got an excuse apart from we're tired. And you can imagine um, when, you know, when you've got your kids and you know that they're guilty or something, and then you say, you know, who broke the glass? You know that I've had it for 30 years since I got married. I had the glass and someone broke it. And everybody's looking at each other like nobody wants to say who broke the glass. Hallelujah. But you know what? I was thinking, my God, you know, Jesus took these three men to help him to pray. But they were so tired that they slept. And Jesus, when you think about it, and when we, we talk about being in, in isolation and social distancing, I can see how Jesus must have felt spiritually isolated, spiritually, you know, um, distant, because um, the Bible nowhere says that God had actually answered his prayers. And two, um, the disciples couldn't even pray with him. And so there was a spiritual, maybe a little bit of a social distancing and isolation happening right here in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, and if you're at home today and you are living alone um, and you're feeling isolated, just think about what Jesus had gone through. And even though you are physically alone, you are not alone because the Lord God, Father, and Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit is with you. And then they, if you have a phone, you can always pick up the phone and talk to one of your brethren. What a wonderful consolation we have. But just think about that. Jesus must have been feeling spiritually isolated at this time. So let's go to verse 41. Then he came the third time and said to them, the third time, you know, and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough that hour has come. So Jesus knew that the time had passed now. If they hadn't prayed, forget it, <laughs> you know, um, because the time had come. And he said, it, sorry, it is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the son of man is being portrayed into the hands of sinners. And in verse 42, I love this picture. Verse 42 says, rise, let us be going. See, see my betrayer is at hand. And the fact, because the way it says rise, Jesus rose and told his disciples to rise with confidence. Jesus had fallen on his face. He had prayed. And when he finished praying, he felt a shift in the atmosphere that he could say that even though his flesh was saying this is going to be hard. Well, hard is an understatement. Um, he realized that he had to undertake this spiritual task. And sometimes, brethren, God asks us to do something difficult. But because we know that Jesus is with us, he will give us insight. He will give us wisdom. He will prepare the way um, that we can say, OK, my flesh may say this, but in my spirit, I know God would have me to do this. And so Jesus was able to say in his distress and his despair, rise. Let us go. Let us be going. Sometimes, you know, you may not physically be going somewhere, but sometimes you need to go in your mind. Yeah, yeah. So in your mind, you need to say, as Angelica was saying, cast off depression, cast off being downcasted, cast off all the negative feelings. That's not going to help you grow in your faith, you know, um, uh, and just go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so in conclusion, when you look throughout Mark, he asks through, if you read the whole chapter, he asks two questions. He, 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 or he talks about faith and fear. That's his two things, faith and fear. Obviously, lots of other things, but in Mark, it's mentioned more than any of the other Gospels. I think 42 times faith and fear 
are mentioned. So to conclude, I would just like to speak to those who may be living in fear and somehow you've allowed fear to seep in. Can I just say, do not condemn yourself. Please do not condemn yourself because we are living in unusual times right now. Very unusual time. This, what's happening now, does not happen every day. Hallelujah. But there is a remedy because to live in fear is not good for us. It really isn't good for us. And in a, let's just turn to um, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 it says for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind and some of you will know that you know different versions say different things but brethren so the spirit of fear does not come from God yes it is an emotion but it's an emotion that God does not want us to concentrate on now you might say but sister bridge is on the news all the time yes it is it's on social media and and the thing about it is is that um you know if you think about the ears what you hear it's an ear gate and if you think about your eyes it is an eye gate and we have to decide what we're allowed to come in and what we're allowed to go out so we can close or open it as will um, and for me, I do listen to the news in the morning because I want to know what's going on. Um, and sometimes I listen to the news again in the evening. Um, and so, but the ear gate, the eye gate, and our senses is a way into the soul. And when you look at the soul, brethren, as you know, it's made up of three parts, the mind, the emotions, and the will. So when you allow a lot of negative things to come in that you really find in it are to stand against, it will affect your mind. It will affect your emotions and it will affect your will because it's all happening in the soul. And so what do you need to do at this time? Crank it up. Hallelujah. I bet you never heard that word in a message. We have to crank it up spiritually, brethren. So if you were having a devotion for 10 minutes in the evening and 10 minutes um, in the morning, you're going to have to crank it up and you're going to need to increase your devotion. You're going to need to increase how many times you pray. You're going to need to increase how many times you go to the word because we are in a different time right now and we need to ensure that our relationship is intact with God. So whatever we hear, we can go to the master and say, look, I have heard this. What do you say? You know, and we need to remember who we are. And so, yes, there are frightening things, but you don't um, happening, but you don't have to hold on to it. You don't have to allow it to come in. You don't have to allow it to come into your front room and sit down. You don't have to give it a cup of tea and some biscuits or a nice piece of Jamaican rum cake or maybe bun because it's Easter. Fling away the bun, fling away the tea and, and tell fear to leave your house. To leave your house. But, you know, the first week, um, um, uh, the first week of the week before the shutdown or the lockdown, the fear that was in the atmosphere, if fear was a tree, you would be able to go outside and pick it. That's how tangible the fear was. But I had to stand on the word of God, me, myself. I had to stand on the word of God and pray over my household and, and with my husband and pray over myself, pray for everybody I could think of praying for fear not to take over. And so if you are in fear today, um, there is a wonderful scripture. As I said, you can crank it up, but trust in God. Hallelujah. Trust in God. Hallelujah. When you are in good relationship, when you're in that space with God, he gives you peace. He gives you everything that you need. Read the word. Worship and praise your God. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. That's what Jesus did. Jesus himself had to pray. Now, one of the things I found a little gem in the Bible, and I don't know if you know this, but in Mark 14, you should already have it open at verse 26, it says that Jesus 
sung a hymn with him and his disciples. I thought that was wonderful. It says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So, you know, we don't really hear that, do we? And so when they say to sing, you know, um, to sing hymns, to sing psalms, to, to, to you know, uh, to encourage yourself. Hallelujah. So it is important to encourage ourselves. And the last scripture I would like, and the, the, the word that talks about encouraging yourself or really speaking into your situation is Ephesians 5.19. It says speaking, because I don't want to say anything and not refer to the word. So you could take a note. Ephesians 5 verse 19 says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When you're making melody in your heart to the Lord and you're worshipping and praising him, it is hard to give room to fear and faith must rise up. Praise the Lord and faith in God, remember, conquers circumstances hallelujah whatever they may be and so the last scripture brethren is second corinthians 10 4 to 6 hallelujah second corinthians 10 4 to 6 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. You may say, well, Sister Bridge, why are you actually reading that scripture? Um, it, you know, the thoughts that come in because of the news that we're hearing... Um, it can cause our imaginations to go where it does not need to go. And so um, the weapons that we need to use, um, you know, that we ourselves have to cast down arguments. We have to use wisdom. God has given us wisdom. The Bible says, if you haven't got it, ask God for it and he will give it to you. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying it in a way to make you feel bad, but the word of God is here to help us grow, you know. And as I said before, there's no condemnation, but God doesn't want you to stay in fear. He wants to lift you up out of fear because faith conquers all things, all circumstances hallelujah and so sometimes when a thought comes and it makes you feel worried it makes it you feel like you've lost your appetite it makes you feel like you don't even want to talk to somebody you don't even want to go out the road to just to walk down the road because you fear what is happening take every thought captive hallelujah know that psalms 91 is for us you know that you know, we want to be sensitive to those people who have lost loved ones. Um, but while we are here and we have breath, we have to use the tools that we have. And we have to use our spiritual warfare. And it's the word. You know, the word says that we are protected. And yes, we have heard of people getting the virus. I can't tell you why they get it and why some people don't get it, but I know that God's word is true. And so we need to stand on the word of God. And if someone falls ill, the word of God says that we can, um, we, we can be healed, you know. And for those who die, and, and, and I think that, um, I think it's, it's really sad because we are in a time of grieving and we want to be respectful to those who are grieving. One of the things that came to me when I was thinking about people maybe being alone and, and not being visited by friends and loved ones and, you know, family, you know what dropped in my spirit? That they were not alone. That heavenly hosts were with those individuals who have died. And it took me back to the time when I was told I was going to die and I was in a ventilator. 
and I saw angels administering to me, looking after me, and I and I'm, at no time did I feel alone. And I said, "Thank you, Jesus." You know, we are worrying and we're thinking, but you have it covered. You have it covered in all circumstances. You have it covered. Hallelujah. And so I hope and pray, even if one person got something from what I said today, you know, it's not about Luther, New Testament Church of God, but it is about our Saviour. Good Friday. He went through so much. You know, we don't have to have Passover anymore. We do not have to um, get a lamb and kill it because Jesus did it all. And what he did 2,000 years ago covers us now and in the future. Hallelujah. And so today, Good Friday, whatever is happening in your atmosphere, you can rise in faith because faith hallelujah faith hallelujah conquers all circumstances thank you jesus and so now what we're going to do we're going to go into a time of Amen. prayer hallelujah we're going to go into a time of prayer and I'm just going to pray for all those. I want to shout out to Sade who lost her nan yesterday. And just to let her know, we're thinking of you, my honey. Um, uh, and so let us all pray. So wherever you are, um, or, you know, whatever country you are in, let us just all pray right now and give God thanks for the sacrifice of his son on the cross. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify your name for you are a good God. Hallelujah. And when we think about what you had to go through, you know, there is a statement that says a lot happened in seven days. Surely a lot happened in seven days, but yet you faced uh, the cup. You drank the cup. For us, Lord Jesus, you took sickness and pain and sorrow on the cross. And you said that by your stripes, we are healed. You took every sickness, every sickness that was known, every sickness that was unknown. Hallelujah. And your body became deformed even when you were on the cross, taking on the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But they did not kill you because the word says that you gave your life. Hallelujah, you gave your life and not one bone was broken. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And so because of what you did on the cross for us, it gives us reassurance. It gives us power. It gives us so many different things. We have protection in the name of Jesus. And you are our provider. And you, 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 you help us, Lord Jesus, in our little everyday circumstances. From the small to the big, you are there. When we are in the valley, you are there. When we're on the mountaintop, you are there. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And so we say, thank you, Lord. Amen. We say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I want to thank all of you that took the time to get up this morning. You may have wanted to have a bit of a lion, but may God bless you all richly, especially all those who are working in the NHS, all those who are working for the emergency services, all those who are working for um, delivery companies and for um, the, 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 the transport and all essential workers. I don't want to miss anybody. At care workers, you know, care workers, everybody. Let us continue to pray for one another until this season has passed. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Good Friday. Amen. Amen. Amen.